In recent years, but especially over the past year, we've seen the rise in what some have called the body count discourse. And this is a discussion about body counts, specifically the body counts of women. More specifically, whether a man should care if oh, the woman he's dating has a high body count. And of course, when we say body count, we don't mean that a man is dating a woman who's a former Marine Corps sniper with 87 confirmed kills. If you're below the age of 40, you, you probably already know that body count in this context means the number of people you've slept with. A woman with a high body count is a woman who has had sex with lots of men. Accompanying these conversations are usually videos where random YouTubers go out into the street or out to some college campus and they ask people about their body counts. And in many videos, you can see young women proudly declare body counts in the dozens or even hundreds. Um, some men, including a, a number of influential men, have, have been pointing out that these sky-high numbers, these Ted Bundy-level body counts, are pretty disgusting. And speaking of Ted Bundy, I, 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 uh, you know, I could probably do an hour-long segment simply on the fact that the phrase body count has come to refer to sexual conquest. There is immense psychological significance to be found in the fact that a term that once referred to killing people now in modern society applies to sex. That's a, that's a different conversation, though. Suffice it to say for now that it's not a positive de development. It doesn't say anything good about modern culture. In any case... All of this discussion about body count has led to a backlash from the other side, where feminists and other assorted ne'er-do-wells have uh, admonished men for having this conversation at all and insisted that we shouldn't care about body counts in the first place. That was the case made this week in The Atlantic by feminist writer Helen Lewis in her article titled, Nobody Should Care About a Woman's Body Count. And she begins by uh, setting the stage with a story of rising misogyny. Quote, uh, ever since Elon Musk's lackeys began fiddling with the algorithms of X, formerly Twitter, I've noticed a distinct shift in the, in the content that is pushed onto users. My For You tab is now a nest of trad wives, shoplifting videos, and that guy who has strong opinions on trouser creases. It's also home to the kind of old-fashioned misogyny that I once thought was on the decline. Now, let me step to the side here to say that um, I can translate uh, uh, this paragraph from feminist into English. Prior to Musk taking over Twitter, every social media company in the world had worked hard to set up a bubble for people like Helen Lewis by suppressing and censoring the very normal common sense perspectives of normal common sense people. But in the Musk era, Twitter no longer does that, which means that she has, she, she has to encounter those perspectives again. She thought they were on the decline because that's the fantasy world that big tech had created for her. And she was never smart enough or skeptical enough to question it. So that's really what's going on here. <laughs> Continuing, one of the obsessions of the worst parts of this group, call, uh, call them the influential jerk web, is body count discourse, in which women, always women, are shamed for the number of sexual partners they've had. The phrase has quickly uh, uh, has gained popularity so quickly that Jason Derulo has just released a new song about it. Now, Derulo is okay with a high body count. Quote, all that ass must be good at math, he observes, but others are not. Uh, quote, a lot of the world's problems could be fixed if women walked around with their body count on their foreheads, the professional kickboxer turned sexist influencer Andrew Tate said in one viral clip. These men provide Gen Z and younger millennials with a very old template for masculinity filtered through the new visual grammar and vocabulary of YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Now, she goes on for a while uh, longer talking about all the dastardly men who have made an issue out of the fact that a certain significant preponderance of modern single women have had uh, sex with entire stadiums full of men. But she does find a bright spot, a, a glimmer of hope towards the end. Quote, two other things are worth noting about the body count discord. Discourse. The first is that some people on the edges of the influential jerk web have consciously rejected its exhausting sexual monitoring of women. The left-wing streamer Destiny, for example, was raised Catholic but is now in an open relationship. Yes, if only more men could be pathetic, disgraced cuckolds like left-wing streamer Destiny. If only we could, we could, uh, you know, if only that's what we could all. If, if we only we could actually live in the world that Helen thought we lived in before Elon Musk destroyed the illusion by lifting all the shadow bands. If only. Now, if you're the perceptive type, at least more perceptive than Helen Lewis, you might notice that although we've read chunks of this article, we haven't gotten to the part where Helen explains why men shouldn't care about body counts. And that's because she never does explain it. She makes not one single argument to support her assertion that nobody should care about a woman's body count. She simply asserts it. She declares it and expects that assertion to somehow carry weight. And this is always the strategy of left-wing feminists. They act as though their viewpoints, no matter how deranged or stupid, are, are self-evident and therefore don't need explaining or defending. They just 
rappel down into the middle of the conversation and declare, no, you're all wrong. Here's what you really should think. And then and then they they leave and they expect us to respond by saying, oh, that's what we should think? Well, okay then. We'll change our viewpoints immediately. If that's what Helen says, then it must be true. Helen would never lie to us. But unfortunately for Helen, it doesn't work that way. And this is the first point. Before we talk about why men care about body count, the most important thing to understand is that they do. They simply do. This is something that men care about. You might think that they, we, shouldn't care about it. You might demand that we not care about it. But people can't be hectored into not caring about something. It's hard enough to convince someone to not care about something. But the feminists, as established, aren't even trying to do that. They're just issuing demands. And those demands can't be met even if we wanted to meet them, which we don't. You can't just tell someone, don't care about that anymore. Oh, okay, I'll just stop caring about it. What we, can't, we care about what we care about. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to care about the same sorts of things. But it is what it is. And in, in some ways, this is maybe the best response to the other side of this discussion, especially because they're not making any kind of actual argument. When a feminist starts screeching that men shouldn't care about this, Perhaps all we should say in response is, okay, but we do. Deal with it. Like, we just do. That's it. But this is a podcast, so uh, I can't just leave it there, especially because there are many valid reasons why so many men do care about this and why the ones who don't or claim they don't should. And first of all, it should be understood that the issue is oftentimes not just a woman's body count, but also her current attitude about her body count. So what is most revolting to a man is is a woman who has slept with many men and rather than repenting of those ways, instead has this attitude about it. Watch. Why do you think men care about a woman's body count? Do you? People actually care about that Men in general. (laughs) If a man is asking me a body count, he can get Who gives a Oh my God, that's so stupid. People actually ask that Yes. You Okay, well then you're talking to the wrong men. If a man is ever asking you about your body count, you're talking to the wrong man, and he can get Like, that's so stupid. Get So, can I ask you this then? (laughs) Sure. So, what do you think about the analogy, if one key can open many locks, it's known as a master key, as opposed to if you have a lock that can be opened by any key, it's a shitty lock. I think that if if a woman is an analogy to you, then you're not ready to be talking to a woman and you should probably get f- so if a woman is the key to you talk to your mom talk to your sister talk to your cousin i don't know get a real f- life and get f- thank you and a woman is not a key thank you hmm. the man can get effed she says repeatedly and it's true that if the man's talking to her he probably can because uh, that sounds like she's probably doing a lot of that Now, that right there is the absolute worst combination for a man. You have a woman who we can assume, based on her defensiveness, has had sex with a significant number of men, and who, far from repenting of it, instead flaunts it proudly, defending it in that screeching, vulgar tone that men find uh, utterly uh, disgusting, really. Everything about the video is repulsive to most men. It's, in a literal sense, disgusting. It, It triggers our disgust reflex. And once again, that's simply not something you can scold us into changing. Why is it disgusting? Why do men care about body count? Well, let's go through a brief list of a few key reasons. Number one, number one, number one is, 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 a very, is the most practical concern, probably. If a woman has been with lots of men, the chance that she has some kind of disease is much higher. The association with promiscuity and dirtiness, uncleanliness, is not arbitrary. It's not socially constructed. Neither is the association with virginity and purity. There's a spiritual connotation to these things, of course, but there's also the physical sense as well. So when a man hears that a woman has been with 25 guys or whatever, one of the very first things he will think is that the woman probably has herpes or something. And this is not an unreasonable assumption. Now, beyond these practical and medical concerns, when a man hears that a woman is promiscuous, this will lead him to rightly question her loyalty. You know, if she has a habit, or or maybe I should say her capacity for loyalty, If she has a habit of jumping into bed with every other guy she meets, then um, he's going to worry that this low impulse control, this habit of following her carnal desires above all, will increase the likelihood that she'll continue in that behavior even after making a commitment to him. So a man wants to be able to say about his woman, 
That is, it is unimaginable that she would jump into bed with some random guy she meets at the gym or whatever. Like, even if she was single, she wouldn't do that. That's what a man wants to be able to say, that even if she was single, she wouldn't do that. That's just, you're not that kind of person. But if the man knows that if she was single, she would do that, then the man will worry, justifiably so, that she will do that even when she's not single. But even if she refrains from uh, hooking up with random men while in a relationship with him, her propensity towards that behavior calls into question her morals and her values. A man wants a woman who is chaste, self-controlled, dignified, classy. And, and, and not just because that makes it less likely that she's diseased, and not just because that makes it less likely that she'll cheat on him, even though those are two big factors, but also even more fundamentally because that's simply the right way to be. A licentious woman is a disordered woman. It's a woman who, who does not have the value system that men admire and find attractive. Now, it's, it's a cliche perhaps, but a man really does want a woman that he can bring home and introduce to his mom. You know, when I first uh, introduced my, my now wife to my parents years ago, uh, my mom uh, pulled me aside within, within about an hour of meeting her and said, we really like her. She's great. And that's when I knew I wanted to marry her because uh, and, and, and I'd only known her for a few weeks at that point. But when you get that kind of endorsement from the people in your life that you look to for advice and they see this woman and they say, this is a very good woman, uh, that, that means a lot to a man. Have you ever read the fine print that appears when you start browsing in incognito mode? It says that you, your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, or your internet service provider. To actually stop people from monitoring your online activity, you need to do what I do and use ExpressVPN. Think about all the times you've used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, hotel, even a friend's house. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit can be logged by the admin of that network, and that's still true even when you're in incognito mode. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data, reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your private online activity stays private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices. It's super easy to use. The app has one button. You tap it to connect, and your browsing activity is secure. It's as simple as that. Stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that, is that men are competitive by nature. So we want to pursue a woman, and if we, if we win her affection, we want to feel as though we've won a great prize. And this kind of works out because women, on the other end, want to be treated as a great prize. You know, the term trophy wife has a negative connotation, but the truth is that, in a sense, every man wants a trophy wife, and every woman wants to be a trophy. That is to say, a man wants to be proud of his wife, wants to be proud to be seen with her, and a wife wants her husband to be proud in that way. But, but a man will feel that he, he can't have this kind of pride in a promiscuous woman because, for one thing, her promiscuity has likely damaged her reputation. You know, uh, The man will feel ashamed to put a ring on the finger of a woman who half the guys in town have already had a turn with. It's, very, it's a very shameful thing. It's embarrassing to him. And more deeply still, if a woman, if a woman does not treat herself as a great prize, if she has given herself away for nothing over and over again, then how can the man see her any differently? If you treat yourself as cheap, other people are not going to see you as high value. Women who give away their intimacy, who offer it up to anyone who comes along, are sending a message about how they perceive their own value. And men hear that message, and they respond accordingly. Now, we spent all this time talking about the body counts of women, but uh, you know, you might ask, what about the body counts of men? Should women care if a man has a high body count? And yes, they should. Most of these same arguments apply in the reverse. But here, we're specifically talking about what men value and should value in a woman. That's the conversation. And I'm here to tell you that men value loyalty. They value good morals. They value virtue. They, they value dignity. They value class. They value grace. They value beauty. They want a high-value woman who treats herself that way and projects that to the world. They want a woman they can show off. They want a woman they can bring home to mom. And, and if you're a single woman and you want to be all those things to a man, then, then don't go around sleeping with random guys. Pretty simple. So this is all why the people who deny that quote-unquote body count matters are today canceled. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.